My name is Yaya Lu. I'm a grade 9 student at Ogilvy High School. I was interested to see if I could find a way for a complete quadriplegic to control a wheelchair by themselves. A person becomes quadriplegic when there is a break in the spinal column above the C7 vertebrae. A complete quadriplegic is unable to control their arms or legs. This means a quadriplegic is dependent on people for almost everything. I thought it would be good if I could find a way for a complete quadriplegic to be able to control their wheelchair themselves, allowing them to have some independence. There was no way I could afford the money required to use a real wheelchair, so I decided to prototype the whole system by making two robots out of LEGO Mindstorms NXT, with one as the headset and the other as the wheelchair itself. This is a real wheelchair, and this is my prototype. There are parts of the face that are still movable, which I thought might be used to control a wheelchair. With practice, some people can move their eyebrows independently, dilate their nostrils, and even, with practice, move their ears. If I was going to use these, I would need to find some sensors which would detect the movements of a quadriplegic face. Real sensors can be quite tiny, inconspicuous, and covered by makeup. The only sensors I had were Lego sensors, which were relatively huge. But if we can get them to work, they will demonstrate that my ideas work. I could measure the acceleration of the body parts using an acceleration sensor like this one. But this is so huge and heavy that the ear or nose could not move, so we thought we won't use it. One of the university projects I heard about is a magnet glued to the person's tongue to control some equipment. I have avoided any use of a sensor on the mouth or chin area because I think this would interfere with the person eating and speaking. I could have used a sensor that measures rotation, but this would have meant the complication of levers or gears, and I thought simplicity was better. I had two colour sensors, the left one high technique and the right one Lego, but the only facial colour change was blushing due to embarrassment, and I didn't particularly want to measure that. The touch sensor is a real possibility, but I would have to mount it very accurately as it needs to come in contact with the skin to work, as seen here. This could cause skin irritation, but it may be a good sensor to use. We have an ultrasonic sensor which measures distance using high frequency sound waves. This would seem ideal, but unfortunately it has a very wide vision and, and it isn't accurate below distances of 4 centimeters, so about there. Also, it is huge and distracting on the face. I also have two light sensors, one each from High Technique and Lego. Both can measure distances using reflected light and are very accurate. However, the LEGO light sensor, this one, is very, is very sensitive to changes to ambient light, and so we have problems going from indoors to outdoors. The high technique one, however, uses pulse light, which is insensitive to ambient light changes. This, we thought, was the best so far. I can use the eyebrow to control the wheelchair. Right eyebrow up, we do a right turn. Uh, right eyebrow. Left eyebrow up, we do a left turn. Left eyebrows. With both eyebrows up, we can go straight ahead. Both eyebrows. And with both eyebrows in their normal positions, we stop. At rest. We have about a 5mm ear movement that the sensor can detect, and when the ear is back, my robot C program sends the chair backwards. With the ear in its normal position, the chair stops. The massive cables linking the robot to the wheelchair would probably create a lot of difficulties if the quadriplegic needed to go to the toilet or get medical treatment. So I made the headset and chair separate, and linked them by radio instead. This wheelchair robot is radio controlled by the headset robot. While LEGO sensors can be big and clumsy, the electronic components inside are only a few millimeters thick and can easily be built into a pair of thick rimmed glasses. Eyebrow sensors here, ear sensors here, NXTB radio here. Difficulties. The no sensor worked, but the movement is probably too small to be reliable. We only had two EOPD sensors instead of the four needed, so we had to test in halves. My research showed that almost everyone can train themselves to move their eyebrows and ears. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my project.